Well, uh, minor correction. About half of what I'm going to show was was shown at conference. Um, uh, there are there were some other features in 111 and 113 to uh, uh, supplement uh, what I showed at conference. So, yeah, the 112 build was the conference release, so it had some some good goodies. Uh, so we'll hit those as well as as the other stuff. Um, and my mouse isn't working all of a sudden. Okay, there we go. The biggest thing that has happened is with the release of 112, with the conference release, we swapped the OK and cancel buttons on the report print option screen. The reason why was everywhere else in the system when the OK and cancel were next to each other, the OK button was to the left except for on the print option screen. So uh, for new users, it becomes yeah a little little weird, a little harder to remember the OK cancel. Those of us that have been doing student manager reporting for umpteen years, like I have, uh, this is a little bit of a growing pain because uh, your muscle memory wants to hit that button on the right and that cancels the report. So yeah, sorry. Uh, this was at the behest of Chuck. So all complaints can go to him. And uh, yeah, blame him. Uh, archive. Um, when you're in the archive, and you're looking through registrations, a lot of those times or a lot of times those courses are already locked. Well, archive kind of locks it anyway you can't make changes to archive data so the locked message that would continuously pop up when you're looking at those registrations uh was an annoyance it was meaningless because who cares if the course is locked the 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 archived data is already locked so um yeah we've gotten rid of that message um uh, starting with that was 111, and that's actually the only new feature that came out in 111. There were quite a few bug fixes with the 111 release, and then of course, you know, I was I was holding on to a few things for conference. So um, yeah, there were there were uh, uh, I was busy doing other things uh, that month. I think that was the May release. So yeah, that would have been the May release. So yeah, that's why this is really the only feature from 111. Uh, another conference item, the on course membership codes. So in the uh, universal code editor, you go in there and go to the, the membership codes. We've added the show name draw button. So you can see everybody who has ever had whatever membership code. So if you're especially handy if you've got multiple membership codes and you're wanting to look um, just who all has gotten those, um, you you can look at that from from the code area. Plus it kind of is handy. It's like, okay, did I create this code and never use it? And then you can do the show name draw and yep, sure enough, nobody has ever registered for it. So and might as well get rid of that membership code. So, or start using it. One of the two. Uh, grouping codes. Prior to the conference build, so the 112 build, uh, grouping codes, when you created a new one, it would automatically be set to um, don't publish on ACEWeb. So now that is unchecked. Um, when you create a new code, it is going to start showing up on ACEWeb once you start adding that that uh, grouping code to courses. Um, if there's no courses in the grouping code, I, I don't think it even shows on the grouping code list. Is that right, Cheryl? I don't think it shows until you actually start adding it to courses. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I remember as well. So. 
Um, but yeah, uh, you're creating a new grouping code. Um, more than likely, you're creating it so that it is shown on the web. So uh, that is now the default. Emailing transcripts. We've had the the where you could generate everybody's transcripts and and it puts it all into a file that's the generate individual PDFs option on on when you go to the transcripts area. Uh, but we didn't have where you could email those. So this was another step further to allow you to to go ahead and email those. So if you're wanting um, you know, for a group uh, or for everybody that's taking a specific con uh, uh, specific course, you know, you can send everybody a transcript. This is all the courses that you're taking, especially, you know, there's uh, conferences. Uh, some people use that as kind of their proof of, hey, here's all the stuff that I've taken through XYZ organization. Uh, to, to show that I am keeping my con continuous education going. And uh, yeah, they can show that as proof to their bosses. So um, handy little thing, save you, you know, a bunch of steps in generating and emailing those PDFs automatically. Uh, the, the F2 screen, the, the, um show enrollment uh in some of the other areas prior to to 112 we we had put it so that there's more showing when you do a drop down well this was one particular screen uh especially with umpteen million grouping codes in in somebody's system uh where you would have to scroll screen you know this all, it was only going to show five in the drop down um but now we've made it deeper so that uh, 20 should show. And then you can scroll because um, I assume you've got more than 20 or most people have more than 20 uh, grouping codes. But uh, yeah, or well, and, and we didn't just do grouping code, account code, uh, subject, um, um, category. Uh, a lot of these drop downs are now deeper. Course location, that's another good one. Uh, blacklist, uh, this is just a, a which button is highlighted um, when you're blacklisting somebody. Um, before it was, um, um, it, it's a confirmation question. And I should have done a screenshot of it, but um, so saying yes was going to put them on the uh, blacklist. So by default, you know, maybe you're, you know, you've accidentally gotten into uh, one of the routines that blacklists the email right now uh, with 113, no is now the default being hit highlighted. So if you hit enter, you know, without really thinking, um, it won't blacklist the person. So you do have to click on yes or change the highlighted um, button before you you go on. Roster reporting, uh, so this is through the menu because we've had on the quick, quick reports, uh, RG hybrid was available in the quick reports area, but we failed to add it to the, the uh, roster reports through the menu. So uh, 113 has corrected that and you can now access that from there. So when you're dealing with hybrid courses and you're wanting to check uh, for if, if the person is uh, a virtual or a in-person uh, attendee, uh, you now have that native to the cursor. You don't have to use an add function to pull it in. Favorite reports. This is a simple little tweak uh, that Chuck asked for. Or I think well, maybe somebody at conference asked for um, because you got global favorites or you can go through the, the favorite reports um, or go to the, the password maintenance and click on um, 
you know, editing somebody else's favorite reports. So it shows favorite reports for whatever user. Um, so to distinguish when you're on your favorite reports, uh, added the word my in front of those. So uh, through the menu, as well as on the quick launch in the middle of student manager screen, um, added that word there as well so that, that it uh, helps distinguish there as well. Uh, another naming just cleanup thing, um, added the word cleanup to the name interest code cleanup uh, routine in, uh, in the report menu. So very minor change. Um, this one's a formatting issue with the refund wizard, uh, the confirmation that comes up at, at after, or yeah, you're on the refund wizard screen, you click process, it comes up with this, is this correct question? And it's the formatting, I've changed it to break it out onto separate lines. Uh, so you see the student's name and course number, course name kind of at the top, then a break before showing the amount, another break if you've chosen to, or um, with the adjustment description. And then if you've chosen to zero out the hours, CEUs and credits, that's another one or another line and attendance records is then on its own or if you have chosen to delete attendance records that's on another line as well so um yeah that yeah hopefully clarifying it instead of one block paragraph with all this stuff in it um hopefully makes it stand out a little bit more just what you are saying yes or no to all right, make credentials. So this is something brand new. Um, it was pointed out that some people are using unlimited UDFs and that's the stuff that they want to, to use with the make credential. If you don't know what make credential is, you're gonna see it here in just a moment. So let me get over to student manager and let me pull up somebody I've been playing with, uh, Michael Boyd. Um, so with this additional UDFs, I've added another field for testing purposes. Uh, I just called it cert grade. Um, so this is what I want to use in, in putting onto the credential is the grade that's entered in here, not necessarily the grade that's out here. Um, maybe there's, uh, maybe this one is a uh, ABC, type thing or yeah do B and you want um what's actually on the credential to be satisfactory unsatisfactory you know so some somewhere you need to bifurcate the grade somehow uh and have a different field for it so now if i hit this make credential button and it's pre-populated with what i chose the last time i ran this so i can do the type um and actually uh Type, type that pulls from your credentials. Uh, you can use unlimited UDFs for the, in the title. It's now a choice in here. Uh, course code is only gonna use course code and um, uh, yeah, their alternate course code. If I had some unlimited date UDFs, uh, those would show up as choices in here but I don't have any, uh, so they aren't gonna show. Uh, so I am gonna use this new cert grade for the score instead of using the regular grade field, which is the first choice. Uh, so cert grade, um, gonna use the hours for the credits. Um, I think, yeah, if I had an, oh, it does do, oh yeah, character and numeric. Uh, uh, unlimited UDS would also show as choices in this dropdown, and then also character UD, unlimited UDS would show up in here. Because I have no way of knowing what you're using your unlimited UDFs for, so I'm just adding them all to a bunch of these dropdowns. So, uh, and then we could put in notes if we want to, but anyway, 
process this. And then if I go to the name info, credential, and here we see uh, the new skills uh, credential in here with the score from the, the, the cert grade unlimited UDF and not from the registration because I did change the registration grade to a B so that it was showing something different. Um, so yeah, hopefully I know at least one school is, um, is wanting that. So hopefully some others can make use of that um, moving forward. All right, next. Mass merge. Um, okay, this is and attendance. So quick reports from a course. Let me pull up. I've got eight people in this course. So quick reports we've had. Uh, let's do O certificates. So we've had for a while now this this option that comes up where you could do all do by a date, select. I want to go ahead and cancel out of here. But um, uh, we hadn't had it on the attendance rosters and the mass uh, merge email. So I've added that and I'm going to leave no split. Uh, default is fine. So added this, this prompting. So if you are just wanting to show um, well, I, for one thing, it's going to help you. If this was a hybrid course, then the hybrid options would also show in here. Uh, so you could do a separate attendance roster for the in-person people and a different uh, uh, attendance roster for the uh, uh, virtual attendees. Uh, so that's going to help you. Uh, if you've got, I don't know, maybe some, you're waiting on, on get, collecting money from somebody, and and you're you know you know yeah i've got a couple of deadbeats in here i'm not even going to put them on the attendance roster because they owe me money and if they don't show up on the attendance roster the instructor can send them my way so you can do something like that um and that's going to go ahead and run so also the same thing with now with the send mass merge email to class because uh, we've had it on the send quick email, um, but yeah, had, didn't have it on the, the send mass merch. So uh, yeah, just adding that uh, little feature to to few, uh, little little feature. Wow, that's that's actually a little bit of work in there. But anyway, added that to those two other areas and uh, uh, got that done. Uh, so F2, um, besides doing the dropper, uh, deeper drop downs, one thing that we've done, or I've done, um, and I'm just going to do in you know, next 90 days, that's fine. Say OK. Added it to this nicer uh, screen before it was kind of a blog grid, the old grid style. But one thing I've done is, so maybe I want, um, oh, what's a good thing? Let's put the waiting and estimated before the paying column. Um, maybe I want, uh, yeah, I want those at the end. Maybe I do not want to see, uh, or maybe I want actual actual over here by minimum. That way I can see all these numbers just right next to each other. Uh, save and close. Actually, save and close and exit without closing, that pretty much does the same thing uh, on this screen because there's nothing that's actually getting saved. Uh, but it does save the order of the columns that you're putting things into. So that is going to save in between runs and you can see those columns where you want to see them each and every time. Um, so yeah, that was mm, a couple of days of pulling my hair out. Uh, next thing, and I think this is probably one of the biggest things uh, that we've done or yeah, that I've done for a student manager this 
particular go around, and this was shown at conference, uh, is the new proxy escrow. Um, so this, if I, okay, who's my test person? Uh, uh, well, we, we can show off a couple of things here. Let's go back to Michael Boyd. Um, this is paid. I'm gonna assign a proxy. So from ACE Web, this would be, you know, if they did a proxy registration, it would automatically show in, but I'm going to put, um, uh, let's do Chuck. Chuck Havlicek is the proxy person for Michael Boyd on this registration. Um, so now if I go to payments, got to check here and I do the refund wizard, the new choice is to go to the proxies escrow. So this would put it to Chuck Havlicek's proxy or to his escrow, not to Michael Boyd's. And let's do, and I still have that. I've got a I've got a data issue where it's duplicating payments somewhere or showing double the amount somewhere. So yeah, it's instead of five hundred dollars, it's showing a thousand dollars. And yeah, once I process this, this is going to show uh, all that. So I'm going to do the delete attendance registration note uh, credit Chuck process. So even in the confirmation, instead of saying to Michael Boyd, it's saying to Charles W. Hevichek the second in this course for for this. So and it's actually showing the correct amount here, but all when this gets done, it's not going to. Um, uh, so now this has been canceled. We it's still showing zero here, no payments. If I click find Michael Boyd does not have an escrow course. So if I go look up Chuck and click find, here's his escrow. And he must have had some escrow money before, uh, but now he's got this check from Michael Boyd, um, which actually probably is duplicated, yeah, 500, 500. Yeah, see, I, for some reason I've got duplication somewhere. I just, yeah, so that's a data issue. On your system, it's not gonna duplicate the money. We've tested this, trust me. Um, I just keep, I keep breaking something in my demo that um, does this. And probably part of it is I need to refresh my demo and, and start over from scratch. I've been doing too many things in this demo with, uh, uh, with playing around. So anyway, with that, are there any questions? You do have a question, Matthew, about um, the escrow funds. An attendee wants to know if it's possible to transfer escrow money from one person to another person. So good question. I want to give my escrow to Cheryl. Transfer payment, transfer entire payment to another registration. And I think what has to happen is somebody it has to be an escrow. Let's up this. Thing. Yeah, so they have to have an escrow already, uh, or at least the escrow placeholder course on their their on on who they're transferring it to. But yeah, you can. So I'm transferring. Yeah, because of the duplication, it's going to transfer that thousand. Okay, and now if I look at Sharon. And find her escrow. There you are with the the five hundred, but that's been duplicated. But yeah, you can do it. So so in order to set it up, you would have to pull up um, either 
pull up the escrow course and add the person or pull up the name. Um, let's say Jason, uh, well, Jason might have, well, let's look. Um, edit registration, find. Yeah, he doesn't have the escrow. So if I add. You can't do it from there, Matthew, because it's not it's, active. Yeah, it's not active. You have so you to have actually to, look up the course. You have to look up the course. Yep. And then add edit Reggie's, add Jason. So in, now if you did make the course active, you could do what I was doing before, but because I don't have it active, you do have to create it. Um, create this registration first, and then you'll be able to transfer to it. Good question. Yes, interesting other, one. Yeah, other questions from the group before we take a walkabout in what's new in AceWeb. And if you think of things as we go along, you, you can certainly do that too. All right, Matthew, let's see if I can have you stop sharing. Hey. Thank you. And we will take a look at what's new in AceWeb here as soon as I share my screen. All right. We have some exciting new things to share in AceWeb for you this month. Um, I'm going to go through each of these items and we'll share, share some screenshots and we'll also share a little bit in this AceWeb sandbox so you can kind of see it in action. For those of you who use TouchNet, any TouchNet users out there, can you raise your hand if you are? I'm going to wake you up a little bit. Any TouchNet users out there? Cheryl, you'll have to let me know because I can't see audience responses now. So if you do use TouchNet, you now will have the ability to accept online checks, these ACH payments. And so that will be available. If you don't use TouchNet and you're interested in a online check version, certainly check with your local payment servers service provider and see if they support ACH payments. And if so, we can probably look into that for you. But you TouchNet users out there, this is going to be available for you. Cash, CashNet has, we've, we've been able to work with CashNet Perfect. for doing ACH for about a year now. So Perfect. that's also another option. All right. Good to know. Those of you, Matthew talked a little bit about hybrid courses. Those of you that have been taking advantage of hybrid courses and putting in virtual seats or in-person seats, that's how we are defining hybrid right now, virtual and in-person at the same time. But you also use um, fee categories. You can do that now with your hybrid classes. You can set up a fee category for example, senior citizen or alumni or whatever. And then AceWeb can recognize that. Now this has to be on a begins with basis. So if your fee category in student manager is senior citizen and you set up your fees, you've got those that come come physically, those that are going to attend virtually, but you offer a little bit of a discount for senior citizens, whether physical or virtual, you can now allow them to, to you can use both the hybrid setting and you can use your um, fee categories to register those students. So that is available to you and this is how it looks Via, the, via AceWeb, it's going to, when I log in as a senior citizen, it's going to give me that lowest senior citizen rate, and then I can say, well, I really don't want to attend virtual. I want to get out and socialize. I can change that fee. So this is available to you now. Required document uploads. This is a big deal, folks, and we're getting lots of interest in this. You've been able to allow document uploads for quite, for quite some time, but now with this new version, you can require students to upload documents before they can complete registrations. For example, we have some um, organizations that are requiring a proof of vaccination to register and attend those classes, or you might have a, a 
medical waiver or medical release for those youth programs or even those exercise programs or tours that you have to have those waivers for. And a registrant can't complete that registration until they have uploaded the documents that you're wanting. And then you can view those documents in the registrant's name record on that additional info tab. And you can do this on a course by course basis. So you can have some that have required documents and others that do not. I'm going to show you a little bit of what this looks like. Um, here's an example, some screenshots, and then we'll jump into the ACE Web Sandbox and take a look. In this situation, this uh, course is requiring a vaccination record. So when you've clicked to upload that vaccine record and you'll they'll be, the uh, registrant will be told what file types and also what file sizes are supported they can browse through and find that car, that vaccination proof of vaccine card and upload that they'll get a notice of a successful upload and then they can return to their cart they will have to check to verify that the vaccine upload was completed before they can complete that registration. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to come into the sandbox. And by the way, all of you out there can also come out here and try some of this just by going to our website and selecting demos in the ACE Web Sandbox. That's where I'm going to be showing these different things. So you can try these as well. So I'm going to log into my account. You can see here that I have logged in. And since my grandson is coming to visit, I want to find, he's coming to visit just this month, and I am wanting to find a fun class for him to attend while he's here. So let's get him in this little campers class. So I am logged in, and you have to be logged in, of course, for the proxy registration feature to work. And I am logged in, and I'm going to enroll somebody else. I'll be presented with a list of names of people that I have registered for, registered on behalf of, and um, choose who I want. So right now, these are the two people, Master Elliot, that's my grandson, and Sophie Labrador, which is my fur baby. And I'm going to be registering Master Elliot this time, and I'm going to add him to this course. Now I'm presented this with my fee, and I, this is going to be required. So I'm going to check that I'm going to upload that medical record. I'm going to browse my PC to find his medical consent form, and I'm going to upload that. I'll be presented with a confirmation that this um, upload was successful. I need to return to my enrollment card, and I'm going to check, yes, I have completed that medical form, and I'm going to check out then for Master Elliot. Head to my payment service, and... I guess it's like they'll tell me, don't keep clicking it. That's not going to make it go any faster. But here's the problem. I did not agree to the terms, so I'm going to agree to those terms and heading to the payment gateway. All right. My record's been completed, but I want to show you where in Student Manager you're going to find these records. So if I look up my grandson and I come to this additional info tab here, oh, it's not there yet, still progressing, but I can show you where I've done this for Sophie in the past in some testing. <clears throat> I hear the confirmation coming in now. Where'd my records go, Cheryl? Right here. There's the medical consent form that I submitted for Sophie. So you're going to find that record on the additional info, the additional documents. You can see this number here that shows I have one additional document to view. And if I want to open it, I just simply need to right click and go to that file for that, for that document. Let's see, I'm curious now if Elliot has shown up now. I was just rushing things. There's Elliot's that I just did. And so this additional, this document of 
required document upload is kind of an enhancement to our existing upload feature. So there is an upcharge to this. For those that may be interested, let me know and I can hook you up. Cheryl, guys seeing any questions there on the document upload or can I move on? You can move on, no questions yet. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, here's another exciting piece of good news for you all. For quite a while, you've been able to let students self-cancel their registrations if they had a zero registration fee. But now you're able to allow students to self-cancel a registration from their ACEWEB account and give their reason, and they can self-cancel those with fees as well. So when they have done that cancellation, I can feel the questions out there. Is anybody in the anybody in the office notified of this? Absolutely. So this is the confirmation of this cancellation that's being sent out to the student and the staff member that you uh, want to receive these copies is set up in your ACEWEB I and I, and so they're getting a copy of this cancellation as well. Where does the money go? Because there are a bazillion cancellation policies and, and rules and regulations and this and that out there. The simplest way we could do this and, and our customers have said this is how they would like to see it, those refunds are going to the student's escrow account. So the student can use it immediately on another registration or they can access it through their account. You know, next time they register, they will be showed that they have money on account that they can apply to a registration. And you have lots of options on this. Um, you're always in control. You can set up in your ACEWEB INI files what the student can cancel, what the staff can cancel, how far out they can cancel. So there's a lot of flexibility in this cancellation, in this cancellation option. So let's give this a shot. I'm still logged in. And so when I click on my account, you can see all of the options that I have here. What credit balances I currently have, upcoming courses of interest to me based on my interest. But what I want to do to cancel my registration is go to this registration history. So here's all the options I can do with the different registrations and, and my participation in courses. I'm going to go to those courses that I am currently registered in. I can no longer attend this strategic management conference, for example. So I'm going to cancel this registration. I'm going to select cancel registration, and then I can choose which class I want to cancel. And here's where it's been set up by ACEWARE University, how long I have to cancel before the begin date of a class. And this is up to you. Uh, this is configurable and how you want to set that up. So I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to say, well, I've done this before. I'll just select this date. It no longer works for me, or I've got a sickness, or whatever people need to say, and I'm going to cancel that registration. So it's telling me that it's been canceled, and I can hear in my earbud that I've already received the cancellation email um, that I showed you before. I can go online and, and register for some other classes, or I can back out of that. Now let's go back to my account here and let's take a look at my credit balance now. I did have $25. I just canceled a class and so now I have an additional credit balance. What does that look like behind the scenes? So if I go to Sharon's account and I want to take a look at how that registration, I'm going to look at the edit registration here and right here is the class that I just canceled. There's a note in the registration note that I self-canceled that, why I canceled, and this, of course, this is how I registered to begin with. So this is how it looks behind the scenes. Now, if I Sharon, refresh here, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, get out of that for a minute. Okay. Close your page, close your blue screen. Two. Yep. All right, now try it. Yeah. And now you see the cancel refund here. Thank you, Cheryl. I did that earlier this morning and she warned me about it and I still did it. Questions about the canceling a registration, Cheryl? 
people doing okay? Hanging in there? Nope, no questions yet. Okay, let's take a look at another new feature that you have. We have had some interest in just like you have the share who's attending this class or share who's attending this course or this event. We've had people that use quick picks or membership courses and they would like to see who is a member in that. So now you are able to, with quick pick or the um, membership courses, see who else is a member. Now, of course, just like in the shows available, those pe people need to opt in to show their name. And you behind the scenes can decide what information about those members that you can share. Um, here's what this looks like. If I am signing up for an Ollie membership, Here's where I'm going to need to add my name so that uh, this can be displayed. And then as a member coming in, if I decide I want to see who else is a member by clicking this link here, and again, you've got to be logged in, I can see the other members. So there are five members, but only three of them are showing because these three have given permission to share their information, the other two have not. So they can see the members. And then in this current situation, all of the different information is available about the member, but you may only want to show name and email. You know, that is completely up to you. All right. I'm going to give a big shout out to Cheryl, who is always, always keeping our ACE web pages fresh and updated. And so if you've seen, even when I was in the sandbox giving a demonstration, these are some of the new templates that are available to you. You've got the banners, you can have warning banners, you can have our catalogs coming out, just a bulletin type announcement. She's done some great refreshing of the layout. And you saw when I was in my account, the different options here and this great looking enrollment card. I have a homework assignment for you. Um, maybe I need to see a raise of hand. Cheryl, you can tell me, but how many of you frequently go in as a secret shopper on your own site and sign into AceWeb as a student? Cheryl, are we getting any hands? Two participants, I see two. All right, three, applause, Three applause. so far. Oh, here they come. Four, They're rushing. Yeah. They were up, you know, getting something. They're rushing back to push that button. Yeah, you should go in every now and then. If you go in there and your pages are not looking like this and you would like kind of a an update to have templates that look like this, get in touch with me. I can connect you and we can get you a little mini makeover and get your site kind of up to date so students are seeing this fresh version. Cheryl, anything Sharon. to add to that? Yep. Yeah, somebody had a question that they put in the question and answer about the Cancel Ridge, which about I what? answered Cancel for Ridge? them. Okay, yeah. you will tell, so, tell it to everybody. Yeah, if you guys look at the question and answer, you'll be able to see the Q&A. It's one of the options down in your Zoom tab. Okay. And so. What was the question? Let's get that for the They wanted anything. to know how to enable the, the self-cancellation feature. And so okay. I told her about the um, the I and I, and then I included a link to the documentation online so they could see some of the settings. Perfect. So if people are listening to this recording and you want to know how to enable that, just jump on the online help and Cheryl will have all of that information there. Or you have that tech that's at your beck and call, right? Right. You can get in touch with them too. Thank you, Cheryl, for bringing that up. All right. So go check your ACE web. See if you have the most updated version. If not, get in touch with me and I know who to connect you with on that. All right, a few things that we have in development for staff access. And there's some folks here that are new and some folks here that um, haven't been on for a while. So I want to remind you staff access. This is the ability to log in via AceWeb and do some of your um, behind the scenes, your, your administrative tasks through ACE Web. 
And so Stein is working on some things for um, modifying cancellation and a few registration updates. And so I think that Cheryl has an image here of some of the new, the new. And I am going to jump out to SAP web, web access here in a little bit and just let people look around because there's some folks that have not seen this at all. The other thing that's under construction, you've always been able to send kind of these emergency messages via student manager in your office. But now we are going to be adding the ability to send those emergency emails through staff web access. So this is being worked on now. And let's just jump out here a little bit. Um, staff web access, you can see here there's a different URL. Cheryl, you might put out there what that URL is for them. You know, this is coming from our Aceware University, and I've added manager web here and I use my student manager credentials to log on and want you to see then once I've logged on I I am logged on right now this is telling me what staff member is logged on and this is what student we're working with and so these are some of the options from a staff if I wanted to look up Miss Cheryl and do some work with her account um, I can do a search for Cheryl and I'll show you how this looks then now I'm still logged in as staff, but if I'm doing any student options, I'm logged in as Cheryl. And so as a staff member, I can look up students, create new accounts, uh, go in as an instructor and do some uh, grade entry or attendance entry, can edit some course information. You want to jump on the site and see what you can do. Um, staff calendar, those bulletins I showed you, this is where those can be edited to give a new an alert or a new great piece of information, notification to the team. Um, and then as a student, if I'm logged in as Cheryl, then I can enroll her in courses. I can do some editing of her name record. I can take payments, pay invoices, cancel her registration. And so these then you can do, you know, just with a browser from home. And so there's several functions and we continually add some new functionality to this staff web access. But I know we have some people on here that are new and don't know about that. So I wanted to share with you. All right, any questions about that, Cheryl? We still doing okay. None so far. Okay, so this is coming. No questions. If you go ahead and type those in there if you want while this slide is up telling you kind of what's next as a, on the user webinar side. Next week, we have this amazing webinar on registration boosters. Everybody wants to fill those seats, whether they're um, in person or whether they're behind the screen, you want to fill those seats up. We'll have some tips and tricks and things that we make available to help you do that. Cheryl, any other questions? I'm seeing something. Okay, she's got manager web up there. Other questions, comments, folks, before we let you go? You're going to have a short survey after here. We're going to want to know what which of these things you think are most awesome that you're most looking forward to. Um, give, us some, give us some input on other webinars you would like to see, topics you would like to see covered, questions that you have. We're, we're here for that. So I'm chatting away, but I'm not seeing any other questions. So if not, we'll let you go finish your day. The weekend's on the horizon, and we hope to see every one of you back next week for registration boosters. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome, Lynette. Bye, everyone.